guys, welcome to DevOps School. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn about Datadog. But before we begin, let me inform you a few things about us. DevOps School is one of the leading platform which offers DevOps, cloud and containers technology training and certification programs for freshers and established professionals who wish to update and consolidate their skills in the dynamic IT scenario. We ensure that the training solutions are delivered by highly experienced domain experts with practical working experience in various verticals. Check out the dates and enroll with us for our upcoming batches. For more info, link and contact details are mentioned in the description below. Yeah. So now we are going to discuss about the Datadog APM dashboard, or you can say the portal. Now, what we did in the last session, uh, we collected lots of metrics, uh, you know, creating a traffic on the on the one of the some sample application of which is of uh, Tomcat using JMeter, and that we are going to analyze that. So now I'm going to teach you real work actually analysis. So data dog application performance monitoring, APM or tracing provides you with a deep insight into the into your application's performance. Remember that I said last day also, if you want to know the deeper semantic information, the internal calls, then you have to set up APM because you have it's agent agent, right? It's running inside your application and they will capture everything. So yes. From automatically generated dashboard for monitoring key metrics like a request volume, volume and latency to detailed traces of the individual request. So what uh, we are talking about, you see that here. It's overall information like you get everything here. And here if you want the detailed one, one by each request. So here you can get into the traces and here you see each and every traces you are getting. See that uh, screen is refreshing. I don't know whether it's visible in a go to meeting session. I mean, this session or not. Can you see this part is getting refreshed? This is a traffic, individual traffic. You can also yes. monitor it. So, that is something which you can get it at Datadog. Now, uh, but not only this, side by side, you can see logs and in infrastructure monitoring also. That means there is one request which we have here. This is only one request and this request on which infrastructure it has played, you know that now. So this request has come in this infrastructure and you want to know what is the CPU, RAM, this, that and all. Everything you have it from here. Metrics, all of these metrics which you collected at these machines, you have it here. Logs, we have not enabled it because it's the next session. Processes, we have enabled it. So you have it. So it's like that. This is the beauty of Datadog. At one place, you get not only consolidated information at a high level, but also at the low level. And also you can complete, get the complete observability matrix at one place. So why we have this one? So it will become easy for for you to troubleshoot and find out the root cause for it. What is the problem? Whether application is a problem or infrastructure is a problem or anything else also. So when a request is made to an application, Datadog can see the traces across the distributed system and we can show you the systematic data about precisely what is happening to that particular request. So this is Datadog APM. So how do we get started? I think each one of you have got started this URL. So you can see health at a glance. That means see an overview of health statistics of your services and prioritize what to optimize and all. Okay, so I think uh, each one of us have, you know, done that. So you have to install the agent, APM agent. So first identify whether it's a host based agent or container based agent or additional like Lambda, Heroku, Cloud Foundry and all such like that. So yes, we, once you set up the APM, then you start enjoying it. So some of the terminology which I would like to show talk about it, service. So each software, each component which you are, which you are installing uh, uh, agent with, it's a service. So if you look at it here, how many services I'm having. So click on the services 
and right now I have only one service and each service we have a type of service also like it can be web this is the web of course but if it is your monitoring database server then for cache or function or custom so service so services are building blocks of modern microservices architecture broadly uh, service groups together endpoints queries or jobs for the for the processes of building your application next one you have a resources so resources is like if you go inside this this is the service go inside the service and then each url of that particular application or that particular service is your resources see here so 32 resources which got the traffic with each endpoints each objects you have resources and now you see that each resources how many total requests you have received total time from last one hour latency 350 p99 errors rate of errors and do you have a synthetic monitoring in place or not you can create a synthetic monitoring so these all are the end point of these applications are resources where the traffic run through monitors monitors means i would put it in a simple way alerts so monitors in datadog is equal to alerts so you can create alerts api matrices monitors works like a regular metric monitoring but with a controlled controls tailored specifically to apm use this monitor to receive alert at a service level on hits errors and variety of latency measures so where do you see the uh, uh, monitoring so see here somewhere top and if you see that here this is the error tracking and you have alerts here okay so here there's one alerts which you have got it this is something you can see that monitoring okay now here also error tracking and all you can see that okay so trace last session we discussed about what is a trace multiple trace bring it together one transactions so how where do you see the trace so if you go to this here individual traces each call is one trace so these all are traces these all are traces here you have a trace a trace is used to track the time spent by an application processing a request and then status of the request each trace consists of one or more spans what is spans then so trace when you hit it create a, again multiple request internally and this each call we call it span you can call it a function call or something like that let me show you so right now there's a very small applications it will not have a too many span click on the one of this and you see there's only one span so there's only one call has happened but if you have a, a real call and all so you can you can have it so this will be something like this if you are having the real applications running so this is one span there's another span there's another span and here you'll get summary each span how much time it take taken for each sheets are you understanding all of you so this is span some of the top level span some of the low level span and trace matrices index span you can tag it also retention period for this all this you uh, content by default like retention filters are tag based control set within the datadog ui that determine what spans to index in and datadog for 15 days some of the more terminologies which we have which includes ingestion control sub layer matrix execution durations and stuff like that i'll just ignore it for time being so now let's start understanding this ui so let's click on it and click on the service so just like i created one service you can also create a service and here you have a last deployment two hours ago of course i did set up two years two hours ago now here total number of requests per second which you are receiving right now 
for this particular application is 123 requests per second. What is the latency for P90, P50, P95 and error rate is this one. So I'm, I'm sure about it, you know that because yesterday we discussed what is a P50, P95 and all. Correct now, all of you? So P50 means what is the minimum response time for the 50% of your traffic? Correct? So P95, 90% of the time. That means 5% of the traffic is having the response time more than 155. And this is the mic, uh, this is a microsecond, guys. This is not a millisecond. This sign which is, you can see is a microsecond. Okay, so the, the website is very small, so that's the reason. Here, each services you have a type. You can filter by the last deploy, some watchdog which I discussed, monitoring status. Do you have any services where there's a alerts, warning, okay, and all stuff like that? And what kind of infra type you have? Is it the Kubernetes, Docker, Fargate, host based, Lambda, and all stuff like that? So, yes, these all are the left side which you have is uh, filters for these services. In real time, you have hundreds of services. You can add more services, add services here. You can save this list, custom list for the service list, and you can do that. Are you comfortable, all of you? Any questions? Any questions? Okay, so click on this service. Now your job is to learn all this graph, what you have. So guys, I did deploy the version one. I hope you remember the version one. This is the version one. So here you have information about how many deployment you made it. So right now we have only one version one, but next time when you uh, change this version, and restart the API. Uh, see, first you have to upgrade your application, then change the API version, and then restart the application. It'll become a version two. So basically, you can compare that version one and version two also here, and you can see that how is this uh, improvement? Whether your improve your application is improving in terms of response time uh, with the next release or reducing it. So those things you can check it out. How many total errors you have? So total errors we have one. Now let's click on it and see that view all issues. And this is the place where you have all issues. Only one request which has some problem. That is that's good. So here error tracking, you can check that. When you set up a SLO, SLO means service level objective. That means my response time should be under this. So that SLO you can set it up here also, add new availability SO and add new latency SLO. But but you can also set up SLO in the metric monitors here also. You can see the list of SLOs and new SLO. By the way, anyone have idea what is SLO? All of you? Any idea? Service level objective. Yes means how why we set it up service level objective uh, to track the internal sla yes so sla we signed with the between the your company and your client but slo we do decide based on our team's objective and slo should be one below that sla so always we take care of our stuff so you can create slos here let's say your response time uh, whatever it is, it can be anything, but you are based on the SLA, you can set up SLO and if SLO uh, will have some problem, you can see that here. All the incident, uh, which you, if you find there is a one error, see, so this can be created one incident here. So here, this is a declare incident. So this graph will be embedded and you can declare the incident. So incident will be reported to someone else. You can say whether severity is one, two, three, four. Now let's say errors in DevOps school and everything will be okay. This, this will be added and uh, no, this graph will be added URL you know, and declare incident. So this incident you declare and now someone has to work for it. So responders, 
impact is that we created a incident in the fast way but this you have to modify after that and who's going to work on it what is your observations and all timeline remediations notifications responders ad chat video call so you can work as a team for that so lots of functionality you have it yes go back to the last one apm dashboard so yes so yes you can you can see the list of deployments which you have in your for this service error tracking slos incident and now you have to understand this graph so if you see that here you have a three four graphs in fact request by version so right now i have only one version which you can see here 1.1 .1. so but if you have a two version deployed then you can see the difference between one and two and whether you are progressing or not so how many total requests you are getting on this particular version or if you have a two version you can get it that how many total requests so right now that the window which i'm dragging right now on with from my cursor 6.55 thousand hits we are getting at that time that is one minute actually duration is one minute so this each block representing one minute you can actually make it bigger also so let's say if you want to make it one day so this block size will change and uh, here you'll have a 20 minutes block right now this is 20 minutes so if you hover over the graph and if you read it little with a little care you'll understand that that's not a difficult see the 20 minutes at the rate of dab 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 that's a time the number of requests release and the version and all so if you play with the more ui then you will understand more better way because but i want to only work with the one one hour because i have a data only for one hour so request by version you can see request and total errors here so right now total hits is this one almost an error is not showing actually because only one so if you declare uh, hide these heads then you can see the errors only one error has happened that too also at 1203 okay so like that uh, here you have a request per second but by virgin so the uh, so uh, datadog is giving you all stats actually all metrics all the graph it's up to you how you use it so here you have a request per second by version and this is at the second level you can see that and here you have a request and errors per second so along with the error also you have it so are you comfortable with this graph all of you all of you hello i'm audible guys okay so now yes this is what i'm talking about so each graph you'll have a three options one option you can use it for the declaring the incident another option which you can use it for exporting the same graph to dashboard or notebook or incident and you can also see in the full view that you can see that here you can see in the full view okay so now here all the latency reports you have it you see that latency by version this is the v1 latency you have here latency historical latency here you have latency distributions okay so different different visualizations you have it to understand that uh, what is the p50 p75 p99 p95 p90 and all stuff like that and app deck score so latency we discuss more or less what is the algorithm applied for this so any anyone have any doubts on the latency part all of you okay so now let's discuss about the app deck one the one which we have not discussed so the question is what is app deck score so if you guys look at it this window very carefully if you look at this windows very carefully 
this abdex score is here 1 so here this is the one last and bottom section 0 that means I know that abdex score will be between 0 to 1 and here we set some t and the value is 0 0.5 seconds so now the question is what is abdex score so look at my screen here that I am going to explain it to you what is abdex score so guys Abdex score measure how much slow site performance contributed to poor customer experience in your app. That means your website is slow, but because of that, what is your experience of your customer? That the process, that algorithm, which you call it Abdex score. So how it works? Let's look at this image. It's very, very important image which you have. So now, guys, let me do one thing. Let me take a screenshot of it and then discuss. So now, see the request happened and the response got generated. So can we call it this as a R response time, this starting and ending represent in R, all of you? Can we do that? Yes. All of you yes. with me? Okay. So now this, whenever the request happened and then response get generated to the application, so that we represent in R. That's called response time. Now the, here we have one keyword which is called T. So what is a T? So T stands for threshold. Now the question is, what is T? So guys, let me ask you one simple question. You are a developer for that applications. And if I ask you, you are engineering team. And if I ask you, hey, if 10,000 traffics are there on your application, 10,000 people are having traffic on your website, then what would be the response time? That means what would be the th threshold? So then you are going to, you are, you are supposed to tell me, right? All of you, correct now, all this data, correct now? Yes. So this is your application and what would be the response time with a certain traffic that you are supposed to tell and that number is T. So E R is a real response time and T is the, your, your estimated threshold actually response time this is the t also response time but what you believe it should be so are you comfortable with the r and the t are you comfortable with the r and t rajesh can you repeat it once so there is one applications request happened response generated and that response time is representing the r this is your application given a certain conditions you are supposed to tell what should be the response time for my application so t is your number which you estimate for your application r is the real number which you get it from the real traffic make sense okay so in that case so we have graph for this as well right in dashboard for difference in accurate time and this one first let's understand the logic no that's what algorithm we're discussing graph i showed you here see that this is the graph now how do you understand that what is the message which is depicting see if you see this graph request an error per second easily you can tell okay these are the number of errors or request per second but what is the abdex score this is the graph how do you understand this that is what i'm trying to explain you the algorithm of it Make sense? Yes. Okay. So now the question is you understood R and then you understand the T. So now you know what? Those requests, please understand that. This is mathematical formula. Those requests where the, the, the response time for those requests are is less than and equal to T. So those requests is considered, those traffic, those people are considered to be a satisfied people actually. 
those requests are satisfied those users are satisfied with your application other bracket where the r is greater than t then those people those people those clients are struggling with your application tolerating your applications and and the place where r is greater than 4x of t so those people are frustrated with that application okay so overall these are the three categories r is been real t you set it up based on that number of request is decided whether it's satisfy category tolerating category and frustrated category are you comfortable so far yes okay great so after that the the question back to the question what was the abdex score in that case so you know guys abdex code formula which you can read it satisfied request plus tolerating request by 2 by total number of request is whatever you get it it is abdex score and this number should be between the 0 to 1 that means if you are closer to 1 your users are more satisfied if you are closer to 0 your users are not satisfied how do you calculate look at this so if you are satisfied if you are satisfied request is 100 in that case tolerating will be 0 so you see the abdex score is 0 a uh, 1 which is the highest score if you are satisfied request is 0 that means everyone is tolerating and frustrated uh, here so your score is 0 and when your score is 0 that means worse so here now you tell me what is that, uh, whether my users is satisfied or not satisfied tell me happy with my applications or not abdex is 1 right yeah it's 1 right is satisfied is highly satisfied, satisfied. highly satisfied yes. but this number abdex code depends on the t which you set it up so right now i set it up my response time should be 0.5 second but in reality uh, all my response time is in a microsecond that's the reason i'm having high abdex code because this i'm not using production like infrastructure right so like that So, did you understand what is abdex code now, all of you? Hello. Okay. So now this graph, which will tell you all this information, all the stats, all the uh, formulas for the errors. So he, you can see the error by version. Right now, I have only one error, so that's all. Error by version. So there's a one error. errors total number of errors only one errors errors per second by version so only one which is here somewhere and errors per second percentage of rate of error by version and percentage of rate of error for last one hours so yeah these are the useful formulas uh, you know data dog is giving you so immediately will come to know uh everything sls and slo you can set it up now here you have a dependencies map dependencies map means so when you set up the real time application and you set it up the app uh, apm at each level then you will have something like this people are covering hitting to this then you send to the database and you may be some other services so like that this kind of app uh, graph will be there right now single one call you are making it that's reason the graph is very you know high tech now here go down here you have all the resources for your applications which you can work with it so here you see that uh, resources requests and request per second here you can see that total request per second on the resource side here deployments means we version 1 version 2 so i deployed only version 1 you can see here and the complete matrix of the version 1 you can see here total request uh, request per second and you know latency again for the version wise this is the version wise 
दैट वॉज अ ग्लोबल अब आई वॉज शोइंग यू आपको बट दिस वर्जन वन एर ट्रैकिंग अगेन मोर डैशबोर्ड मोर ग्राफ्स यू कैन सी इट हियर दिस इज द एर एफ सो नाउ योर जॉब इज टू फाइंड आउट वाई दिस इज एर एफ सो हियर वी डिटेक्ट द पैटर्न ऑफ एर एफ इन वैलिड कैरेक्टर्स सो दिस इज एर एफ नाउ ट्रबल शूट दिस एर एफ दिस इज वन ऑफ द ट्रीज एर एफ सी दिस इज पास्ट रॉ एर एफ एंड हियर यू सी सम जावा इशूज एक्चुअली मेथड नेम्स एंड टोकिन which version which environment which operations name and all everything you can get it here only you can mute this issue you can make it copy this url declare incident export to incidents all these thing you can do infrastructure on which the cpm is running so here you can see that so tag is not matching this region here it's not got in the jvm matrix if you are a java developer this you will love it this kind of complete report about the heap size non heap size usage you know gc garbage cult collector non heap and everything you will get it here about your applications here profiling all the details right now there is only one profile i created and here and traces all the traces for this application you can see that here here also you can see the traces here also you can see the traces the only difference is here you see the traces for your application here you see the traces for entire applications so it's like that and log patterns so guys this is the wonderful graph you have everything at one place and this is the way you can go ahead and find out culprit so now time has come for finding out the culprit so first thing i want to know which resources loading time is more so find out here the loading time for for this is see 2.3 second per second total time you see here so what is the resources which resources as per this where is the problem so problem is this problem so it's taking total time for loading is 37.29 second this is the second problem so these are the problems but if you want to know the trace level not resources level so click on the trace and i want to know which trace has taken a more response time so here these are all the traces durations filter by 2 seconds so this trace has a problem this has taken 1.2 or 2.13 seconds everything else is in milliseconds so what is the problem here let me click and now you have to troubleshoot this is the traces which has taken duration for this at this time this services execution time span everything and this includes infrastructure running in this and matrices you are getting generating from this logs is not enabled processes are running this and now you troubleshoot this is your world this is your ui your job is to find out the resources or the trace which has which is taking longer time and you have to fix it are you understanding all of you yes so this will be accessed by ops team sra team also this will be accessed by development team also this will be accessed by qa team also so if there is a infrastructure issue sra teams has to fix if this is the code issues development team has to fix but there's one good thing is all of us are working at one platform correct now okay great so you can open up in the full page also and when you open up in the full page this is for the each traces you will see you know little bit more elaborated view for everything so it's wonderful now i'll click on the not trees but resources so go down here and there is a resources which is this one let me click on that so now you can do the analysis on the resource basis right now okay so you can go for the full page and this is a resource resource remember that all this graph is same but it got populated for particular resources okay so see here 
almost same graph but now we are at the resource level earlier it was at the consolidated level for entire services okay so this is something which you have it now you have a downside also lots of things which you can check it out now here if you see that timestamp you can change it for the details and and so on so you can download it you can set that which column you want to see which column you don't want to see here dot you can see that view in service map related traces related profiles related logs logs is not enabled that's the next topic which will do that you can fab these services here so it will be fab in real time you have hundreds of services here so you can fab it up okay so you created incident you can create slos also so what should be the slos so slo is this uh, request it should be 6.1k per second per minute sorry so you can set this slo add new slo latency or availability let's go for the availability and here these all metrics which is available for you trace dot servlet dot request hit it and all this is selected you can change it if you want it add a target so select up to the three target this is the slo and something has to be done and which is Yep. So at the target here, SLO is set. See here, SLO for seven days, error budget. For creating SLO, you know what? You should have uh, some durations of the data. Right now, hardly I have one hour of data. So I set this target. My target is 99%. Windows is seven days. And this is the status, you know, error budget and save any. So yes, uh, something like this, you can set it up. The SLO here, new SLO has set it up, it has to come, refresh. It's not detecting, it will take some time maybe. So incident, error rate, deployment and so on. So guys, did you understand that all of you? what need to be done by each one of us. Along with that, you can access our other tutorials such as Docker, Ansible, Jenkins, Terraform, Splunk, AWS, Azure, and various other DevOps related premium tutorials with our channel membership. If you would have any issues with our channel membership, you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video. To get our channel membership, click on to the join button, select the 3D99 plan and grow your skills immensely. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries, we will reply to them at the earliest. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, if you would like to access the remaining videos of this playlist or 50 plus more tools which are coming under DevOps, DevSecOps, SRE, DataOps, GitOps, ETC. Kindly become our channel members by clicking on the joining button. You would have access to 100s of playlists and 1000s of videos lifetime access with this membership. Enjoy!